At first flush, this looks like a reasonably healthy cereal crop. But take a closer look and there are areas not performing so well. Dr Nigel Wilhelm and agronomist Sam Trengove are investigating whether lack of potassium is to blame. It's an emerging problem, I think, is, is the nub of it. We've, we haven't been using potassium fertilisers in South Australia typically in the cropping zone and yet we've been getting reports from farmers and consultants of responses to potassium or concerns that their crops aren't growing as well because they are potassium deficient. Dr Wilhelm is a senior scientist with SADI, the South Australian Research and Development Institute, the research division of the Department of Primary Industries and Regions in South Australia. And he's heading up a project with GRDC Investment looking into potassium deficiency in the southern region. Well, this is a small trial part of the project, a pilot project that GRDC are running, and it's simply an attempt to identify the scope and severity of potassium deficiency across Australia. So we've got eight of these trials, and they're simply a grid of no treatment at all versus a luxury amount of potassium put out early. The early signs are stark. Look closely at this grid and you can see what Nigel is referring to. The lighter green cereal plants are the business as usual model, no extra potassium. The darker, taller plants have had the so-called luxury amount of 150 kilograms per hectare applied. I guess we're just seeing a more vigorous crop. It's darker, it's leafier, it's stronger, it's a bit higher. But it's very hard to walk into the untreated area and be sure that it's potassium deficiency. It's only because we've got the luxury potassium right next to it that we can see. Local private agronomist Sam Trengove says the symptoms of potassium deficiency can be confused with other issues. It's basically identifying the poor crop growth and then investigating from there. So the use of tissue testing is one sort of diagnostic to help try and understand why one part of the paddock might be poorer as opposed to another part of the paddock which doesn't have that issue. One trick is checking the chaff lines. If there's better growth along the line where the header harvested the previous crop, then it could be a sign of potassium deficiency in that paddock. So here's the chaff from the header row. Yeah, gotcha. There's a lot more there, isn't there, in that line? Mm, okay. Here's the better crop growth. Certainly a better crop through here, isn't it? Bigger leaves, darker green. Nearly double, I'd say. Every time the harvested crop leaves a paddock, potassium goes with it. When hay is cut, as much as 10 times the amount of potassium is taken away. The chaff in these header rows helps replenish that potassium enough to give the crop a boost. Strangely, when soil samples are taken, they often show the potassium level is adequate. It's now thought the testing procedure itself could need recalibrating. We have a commercial soil test for picking up potassium deficiency, but it was developed under West Australian conditions and the West Australian cropping zones dominated by sandy soils. So the critical levels or the diagnostic criteria have been developed for sandy soils. We have taken those criteria, brought them to southeastern Australia and hope that they would work. The early signs are they don't. At the surface here on the zero to 10, we can see we've got this textured loam and then There's something that, else interesting the happening in these York Peninsula soils. The deeper you go, the less potassium. At this site, the Colwell potassium in the surface, 10 centimetres there is 175 parts per million, which based on traditional standards is considered to be adequate, but at this site here we are observing potassium responses. Uh, and as we go down in depth to that 10 to 40 and 40 to 70 centimetre layer, it declines to 65 and 50 parts per million. This is opposite to what happens in other districts. Dr Nigel Wilhelm says it's looking as if taking leaf samples will be a better gauge of potassium than doing soil samples. So the farmer can take a sample of leaves or the whole shoots, get them analysed, and that's proving quite sensitive to the presence of potassium deficiency. So that's really our go-to tool at the moment. If there is a potassium shortfall, it might be best remedied at seeding. The early results that we've got are suggesting that uh, potash applied in furrow, uh, which means um, 
through the seeder, placed below the seed, has been more efficient than broadcasting it, either before sowing or, or after sowing. There is another year of this trial, but early results will be published on the GRDC website later in 2023.